And now we get to the topic of collinearity. Predictor variables exhibit collinearity when one of the predictors can be predicted well from the others. Consequences of collinearity are the coefficients in a multiple regression model can be surprising, taking an unanticipated sign or being unexpectedly large or small. The stronger the correlation between coefficients, the more the variance of their coefficients increases when both are included in the model. This is called variance inflation. This can lead to a smaller t, t, t statistic and a correspondingly large p-value. So recall the house price data we started this chapter with from Zillow, and we regressed price on living area and we, regre we regressed price on bedrooms. So the simple linear regression of price against living area was highly significant. The p-value is really tiny um, and the slope of the coefficient is positive. And we see that simple regression predicts and we expect $88.30 increase in mean price for each additional square foot of space. And then we did the regression of house price on bedrooms. And we again see highly significant, positive slope, the simple regression model predicts $48,218.91 increase in mean price for each additional bedroom. So both of these are positive relationships. But then when we incorporated both of these predictors into one model, we got a counterintuitive sign on bedrooms. It's now negative. So we talked about this before, but it turns out that the correlation between the two predictors themselves, bedrooms and living area, is positive and moderate, 0.66. So these end up predicting each other well. So some of the information in the number of bedrooms is contained in living area and vice versa. So notice that the standard error for living area increased from 2.33 to 3.11. So in our simple linear regression, it was 2.33 and now the standard error has increased to 3.11. Now, let's take a look at the same phenomenon with the same data set. First, we're gonna do the simple regression on living area. Again, it predicts $88.30 increase in mean price for each additional square foot of space. And now let's look at the simple linear regression for the number of bathrooms. Again, a positive coefficient, highly significant. Simple regression predicts $77,084.36 increase in mean price for each additional bathroom. Now, when we look at the house price regressed on both at the same time, living area and bedrooms, we still have positive coefficients, but notice that the standard errors have undergone significant percentage change from the simple regression to the multiple regression. So, the coefficient, the standard error for living area went from 2.33 to 3.36, and the coefficient, the standard error for bathrooms went from 27.78 to 34.22. So again, those standard errors increased. It turns out again that these two predictors are correlated. The correlation is positive, 0.73, between living area and bathrooms. Now, when one of the predictor variables in a multiple regression can be predicted well from another predictor variable or a combination of other predictor variables, they are said to be collinear. We refer to this issue as collinearity, or sometimes people call it multicollinearity. High collinearity leads to the coefficient being poorly estimated and having a large standard error and correspondingly low T statistic and high p-value. So it can make it look not significant in the presence of the other terms in the model. And the coefficient may seem to be the wrong size or even the wrong sign, like we saw in the bedrooms and living area example. So how do we evaluate for collinearity? Well, we've got one measure of the degree of collinearity in the VIF, or variance inflation factor. The VIF is calculated according to this formula. It's 1 over 1 minus ri squared, so r squared sub i. What's r squared sub i? That is the r squared for the regression of xi on all the other x's. So for instance, if we have a regression where we're regressing y on a, b, c, and d, 
and we want to look at collinearity, we want to calculate the VIF. Well, the VIF for A would be the R squared from the regression of A as the response variable regressed on B, C, and D. So that's what that R, or the R squared in the VIF calculation would be from the regression of A on the other three predictors, B, C, and D. So what does that tell you? If A, if the R squared for this regression, oops, if the R squared for this regression is high, that means that A is, can be written as a linear combination of B, C, and D. So it's, it's explained by B, C, and D. So they're collinear. So why don't we just report that R squared for each one? Well, this has a nice interpretation. So what if the R squared is 75%, 0.75? Then what would my VIF be? If my R squared was 0.75, my VIF would be 1 over 1 minus 0.75. And that's 1 over 0.25, which is 4. So if your R squared of a single predictor against all the other predictors is 0.75, then your VIF is 4. What happens if the R squared of a single predictor against all the others is 80%? Then my VIF is 1 over 1 minus 0.8, which is 1 over 0.2, which is 5. And what happens if my R squared of one predictor against all the others is 90%? And the VIF is 1 over 1 minus 0.9, which is 1 over 0.1, which is 10. So the reason I've illustrated these three is to show you where the common cutoffs are for what we consider high collinearity according to our VIF. A variance inflation factor of 4 indicates that that variable regressed on all the others leads to an R squared of 0.75, 75%. An 80% R squared leads to a VIF of 5, and a 90% R squared leads to a VIF of 10. So, which one are we going to use? We're going to kind of start at 4. All right, so the common cutoff for VIF is greater than or equal to 4. You should suspect collinearity. But some recommend a more lenient cutoff of 5 or 10 when that R squared grows to be 80 or 90%. Statistical software package, packages will report the VIF for each predictor when asked. So for example, in our coaster data set that we've been working with, for the regression of speed on drop, length, and duration, if we want to find the VIF for drop, we can simply fit our model in R, make sure we have the car library loaded, the car package loaded, do VIF of my fitted model, and it gives me the three variance inflation factors calculated for me. So the highest one is 2.97 for length, and that's lower than any of our suggested cutoffs. None of them are higher than four, so we don't have evidence of collinearity here. Now, what do you do in the presence of collinearity? Collinearity does not affect the fit of the model or predictions using the model, but it does make choosing the best set of predictors more difficult and can also mask or change the interpretation of the effect of a predictor on the response. It can change the sign, etc. So, if you simplify the model by removing some of the predictors based on the VIF, which ones should you keep? Well, keep the ones that are most reliably measured. Keep the ones that are least expensive to find. Keep the ones that are inherently important to the problem. Or keep new variables formed by combining variables. 